How's it going everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins and welcome back to another episode of the most rare and valuable coins from Canada. Today we're going to be discussing one of the greatest Canadian modern nickel heirs that you probably had no idea existed and that is the Canadian 1980 nickel with machine doubling. This is a unique air or variety that was produced by the Canadian Mint in the year 1980 and has only gained major popularity and value within the last five years or so. During the process in which the dyes were being prepared to strike nickels in the year 1980, some of the dyes were actually being overused, which either caused them to shift slightly or cause deterioration or imperfections on the details on the numbers and the date, giving it a unique appearance and also making it highly desirable for collectors and Canadian coin roll hunters. In this video, we will explore the historical context surrounding the production of these rare 5 cent coins and delve into why they hold such importance in Canadian numismatic history. Additionally, we will discuss the distinguishing features, their significance among collectors, and also the potential value if you were ever to find a legitimate example. Before I do get into this, I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also ring that bell notification. My channel is growing really fast and I would like to thank all of you guys for the support, but if you guys want to help my channel grow and improve the quality of my content the best way that you can do that is by smashing that thumbs up and checking out my new videos as they are being released also make sure to stay to the end of the video if you would like to find out how much you could get for one of these coins if you did ever find one of them and then without further ado what do you say we get right into it and discuss the canadian 1980 double date nickel let's get it guys Canadian air coins come into existence during the minting process due to various factors such as problems with coin dyes, planchette quality, striking pressure, and other mechanical issues. These errors can manifest in different forms and affect the appearance of the coins. Here's a brief overview of some of the different errors and varieties that you can look for on Canadian coins that can make them more valuable. The first are dye errors. These are errors related to the coin dies, including double dies, die cracks, and die clashes. Double dies occur when the die is engraved with multiple impressions of the design, leading to doubled or overlapping features on the coin. Die cracks and die clashes result from damage to the die itself and can create unique patterns on the coin. There are also planchette errors. Planchette errors occur when the coin's blank metal disc or planchette is imperfect. These errors include off-center strikes, planchette clips, and that is where a portion of the planchette is missing, and planchette flaws like laminations or cracks. I've actually found a Canadian 1980 penny with a clipped planchette in one of my coin roll hunts. It was definitely one of my greatest finds to date, and super awesome to be able to find that. I think I sold it for like three to five dollars at the coin shop one day, so you definitely can get a premium for these coins if they have a significant error. There are also striking errors. Striking errors happen during the coin press operation. They include coin blanks that are not properly centered, resulting in off-center strikes. Collar errors can lead to irregular shapes while overstrikes occur when a coin is struck multiple times with different dies. And then there are mechanical errors. This happens with mechanical issues in the coin press and it can lead to errors like machine doubling where the design is flattened or appears doubled due to the die moving during the strike. And that is actually what happened on the coin that we are discussing today, the 1980 double date nickel. Now, how do these error attributions affect the value and rarity of these coins? Well, first for double dies, these are among the most sought after errors, especially if they exhibit strong doubling and are well preserved. They can command significant premiums from collectors. A great example of a double die would be the 1955 Lincoln penny with a double dyed obverse. The date is double struck on that coin and it is very significant. There are also die cracks and clashes. While not as valuable as double dies, coins with distinctive die cracks or clashes can still be desirable to collectors, particularly if the error is prominent and it is featured on an older piece. Planchette errors. Off-center strikes and major planchette errors can increase a coin's value, but it often depends on the specific error's visibility and the impact on the design and features of the coin. Striking errors. Off-center strikes and overstrikes may have numismatic value, especially if they result in visually appealing and unique patterns. And then probably one of the most common is machine doubling, especially amongst Canadian coins before the year 1990. Errors like machine doubling are much more common and will generally have lower values compared to other rare air types like double dies. 
The value and rarity of Canadian air coins are usually determined by various factors. Collectors often appreciate air coins not only for their unique characteristics, but also for the stories and the history behind each piece. Now, when it comes to the Canadian 1980 nickel, to be able to get the most amount of money for this coin, you need to be able to identify a significant machine doubling on the date. Now, here is some information on machine doubling and how to identify it on your coins to potentially make them more valuable. Usually, if a Canadian coin is in a high grade and exhibits an air or variety such as machine doubling, it will add a premium to the coin, but there are usually notable dates to look for, like the 1980 nickel, that can make it worth far more than its face value. Now, here are some of the characteristics of machine doubling. Now, some of this may get a little bit technical, but I do want to be thorough and give you guys a very good understanding of what to look for. But the first thing that we want to look for is narrowing of the high points. One of the key features of machine doubling is that it causes the highest points of the coin's design to appear slightly narrower at the top. This effect is due to the flattening of a portion of the primary image during the coin striking process. Machine doubling errors encompass several subtypes, including ejection doubling. This occurs when a coin sticks to the die during ejection from the press, and there is also die chatter. Die chatter refers to minor differences in the design caused by vibrations or imperfections in the die surface. There's also horizontal twisting or vibration. When a die is slightly loose or misaligned during the striking process, it may twist horizontally or vibrate at the end of the strike. As the die returns to its original position, it can release this twist and push the metal on the side and upward, resulting in doubling. Machine doubling will usually appear on letters, numbers, and the main design. The reason that these coins are considered rare and do hold a premium above face value is usually when quality control personnel notice machine doubling, they will take corrective actioning by tightening the part of the coin press that holds the die to resolve the issue, thus not too many of these will actually make it out. Now machine doubling is one of the most common types of errors found on coins. It is generally more prevalent than rare and more sought after errors like doubled dies. Machine doubling is a frequently encountered error on Canadian coins resulting from issues during the coin striking process. And while machine doubling is generally less rare and sought after by collectors compared to more distinctive errors, understanding these nuances will help collectors and yourself accurately identify and assess these coins and their values. Now what do you say we get into the coin that you guys are all here to find out about and that is the 1980 nickel with machine doubling on the date and it can also happen on the lettering for Canada right above the date. So if you can identify the machine doubling, it will almost look like the date is 3D. That is the best way that I can put it to an amateur if you are looking and try to identify this. The specifications for the 1980 Canadian nickel it is composed of 100% nickel alloy. It has a weight of 4.54 grams, a diameter of 21.2 millimeters, and a thickness of 1.75 millimeters. The coin was designed and engraved by Arnold Mockin and Walter Ott for the obverse and GE Kruger Gray and Thomas Shingles for the reverse. The edge of the coin is smooth, it is magnetic, and it has a die axis and metal alignment as is the standard for most Canadian coins. Now in terms of value, getting accurate price estimates for the 1980 coin, if it does have doubling on the date, can be pretty tricky. Coins in Canada does actually list this error on their website, but they don't list a lot of values for it, honestly. The values start to kick in at the MS60 mark, and they top out at the MS63. So Coins in Canada appraises this piece around $13.90 for an MS60, around $20 for an MS62, and all the way up to $30 for an MS63. But if you compare that to the 1980 without machine doubling, it is significantly more valuable. For example, the 1980 without machine doubling is only worth around a dollar for an MS63. So if it does have the double date, it is worth around 30 times more. So if you do extrapolate that upwards, I estimate that you could easily get anywhere from $200 to $1,000 for one of these pieces if it's scored between an MS65 and MS67. Unfortunately, PCGS does not attribute this error or variety yet, but they may eventually one day because it has become quite notable over the last few years. If you were to find someone that's really into air coins, you might have no problem 
getting a couple hundred dollars for this piece. So it is definitely a good one to have on your radar. You should definitely throw your 1980 nickels to the side and check them with a microscope or zoom in real close on that date with your phone. And if you can identify that machine doubling, you may have a valuable coin. In terms of the low end value, I'm not gonna say that it's worth very much. If it's hovering somewhere around the AU mark, you might be able to get a couple dollars if somebody really wants it and they are into air coins. But usually to get the most amount of money out of these coins, you want them to be in a high mint state. So that means M MS65 to MS67. Now, what do you guys think about the 1980 double date nickel? What would you do if you ever found a legitimate example or if you ever have found one or any of the coins discussed in this video? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to know. Also, I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also ring that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new content. But I think that is pretty much going to do it for this one, folks. So until the next one, everybody, peace out and have a good one, y'all.